Hello, this is Anthony, back for another episode in the Python 3 series. I know it's been a while, and I'm going to be honest, I don't really have an excuse. Anyway, here's an episode which attempts to demystify IO in Python. Today we're going to be covering the differences between binary and text IO. Then we'll cover the behavior in both Python 2 and Python 3. And finally, I'll give some code snippets showing you how to deal with these differences in a 2 and 3 compatible way. First, we should define what I mean by I.O. Files on disk store data in a series of ones and zeros, but for simplicity's sake, we'll just consider them to be a series of bytes. This will make it slightly easier to reason about. We'll also consider standard in and standard out, the input and output of a program, to both be a special type of file. For text, which you can think about as a series of code points, the bytes that represent these code points have a specific encoding. In other words, a code point translated with a specific encoding will map to a specific sequence of bytes. In this example here, I'm using the UTF-8 encoding. UTF-8 is an ASCII-compatible encoding, that is, it translates code points that are in the ASCII range to the same bytes as the ASCII encoding does. It is also a variable length encoding, translating some code points to different length byte sequences. For example, our friend the snowman is translated to three bytes in UTF-8. At some point, I'll probably do a whole video on encodings, but for now it's sufficient to know that textual data and bytes data are not the same. First, let's talk about binary I.O. A binary I.O. takes in binary data, surprise, and writes that unmodified to the disk. Two types in Python represent binary data, bytes and byte array. The bytes in your program are written directly to disk without any translation. Next, we'll describe textual I.O. Text, which is the Unicode type in Python 2, and stir in Python 3, is first translated with an encoding to a series of bytes, and then that series of bytes is written to disk. The text in your program is represented as encoded bytes on disk. Next, we'll talk about the behavior in Python 2. The first topic is the built-in open function. Files opened with open will always be in binary mode in Python 2. Using wb or rb as the mode is redundant, though it's a good idea to document your intent. As with most Python 2 APIs, Unicode may be implicitly converted by the ASCII codec when writing. The first example here demonstrates a successful implicit conversion of ASCII text. The second shows that the data is binary, and the third shows how this can go pear-shaped when writing non-ASCII textual data. It is possible to convert these binary streams into pseudo-text I.O. objects using the C API. Now we'll look at some special streams in Python which do just that. The standard out and standard error members of the sys module are just special file objects. During interpreter startup, pyfile set encoding and errors is called on these two objects. But in Python 2, this only happens when those streams are attached to a terminal. As such, you can write textual data to standard out and standard error, and with the print function, as long as that textual data is encodable with the automatically detected encoding. I say automatically detected encoding because it is detected via environment variables. This may seem nuts, but Python inherited this idea from C. If you don't have this environment variable set, or this environment variable is set to C, it will be detected as the ASCII encoding, which cannot encode very many code points. I mentioned before that Python 2 only changes these to text streams if a terminal is attached. As demonstrated here, if you're writing to a pipe or a file, the automatic encoding detection fails. In summary, in Python 2, if the environment may vary or you might not have a TTY, the only reliable way to write non-ASCII textual data to standard out or standard error is by writing encoded bytes directly. Next, we'll talk about some in-memory I.O. classes. The first is cstringio.stringio. This is a binary stream and acts similar to the open function in Python 2. The second is stringio.stringio. This allows mixed-mode text plus binary writing if the ASCII encoding can convert between the two. If any of the inputs are text, the result from reading a string I.O. object will also be text. Otherwise, it will produce binary output. String I.O. is much, much slower than the C string I.O. counterpart as it is implemented in pure Python. Here's an example where mixing data types will cause a Unicode decode error. Next, we'll switch to talking about the new behavior in Python 3. We'll just be discussing the IO module throughout. The one thing to know is that in Python 3, the built-in open function is identical to IO.open. IO.open has two modes dependent on the mode parameter passed in. If the mode is WB or RB, B being binary, 
the open function will return a binary I.O. object. This object is strict and requires bytes. Going with one of the broad themes of Python 3, implicit conversion between text and bytes is explicitly an error. Otherwise, io.open will return an io.textio wrapper. This object requires text when writing. Here's an example demonstrating the error message received when attempting to write text to a binary string. Equivalently, here's the same situation in reverse, writing binary data to a text string. If you'd like to control the encoding that is used to write text data, you can pass the encoding keyword argument. If encoding is not passed, it will be automatically determined using encoding, which usually means looking at the lang environment variable. Conveniently, when discussing standard out, standard error, and print in Python 3, we don't need to extend the discussion beyond saying that they are text.io implemented as text.io wrappers. You can access the underlying binary object by accessing the buffer attribute. Print in Python 3 will write as if writing to a text stream, converting any of the arguments with stir if necessary. One interesting side effect of this is when printing a bytes object, it will literally print the B and the quotation marks. As with Python 2, writing text is subject to environment variables, again for the same reasons. One huge gotcha in Python 3 is that IO is now buffered by default. This means that when calling print or write, your data may not be instantly written and may be deferred until later. If your output may be piped, such as writing to a log file, be sure to either manually call flush or use the flush equals true keyword argument, such that it is shown immediately. For in-memory IO, this story is much simpler in Python 3. There is an io.bytes.io class for binary in-memory operations, and an io.stringio counterpart for text. Now we'll finally get to talk about how to write 2 plus 3 code. Fortunately, this discussion is super easy as the IO module is included in Python 2.6 plus. Simply replace open calls with io.open and replace cstringio slash stringio with either io.bytes.io or io.stringio. Writing binary data to standard IO can be accomplished by conditionally accessing the buffer property and using that to write. Writing text.io is a little more difficult as the io.text.io wrapper backport doesn't work with the standard IO streams. Fortunately, you can just use codex.gitwriter instead. If your program needs to write in a constrained environment where lang might not be reliable, you can either write as bytes as seen before, or you can use a variation of the text writing where you force the encoding to a specific encoding. In this case, I'm forcing the UTF-8 encoding. That's all for IO. Thanks for watching and have a good one.